Hello, everyone. Uh, this is chapter 3.2 uh, within the macromolecules chapter. This specific section is going to talk about uh, carbohydrates, which is one of the four macromolecules. So carbohydrates you've probably heard about uh, or at least know a little bit about. They are our energy source for organisms. This is where we get most, if not all, of our energy. They come in a ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen in the form of one, two to one. That means for every carbon, there's going to be two hydrogens and one oxygen. Now, the really cool thing here is let's talk about why carbohydrates are called carbohydrates. For every carbon, carbo, for every carbon, there is a hydrate. There's a water. So for every carbon, look at the one, there's two hydrogens and an oxygen. If you remember, H2O is water. That's why they call it carbohydrates. Now, the monomer for these are monosaccharides. Remember, mono means one. Saccharide is going to mean sugar. So the polymer for these are called polysaccharides. Now, there are some other uh, delineations between monosaccharides and polysaccharides, which we're going to get to next. But I would know that, again, mono is the, or monosaccharides is the monomer and polysaccharides are the polymers. Here is a, an example of one of those, which is a glucose. This is a type of monomer. This is a monomer right here. The starch up here is the polymer. So one type of monosaccharide, again, mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar, is glucose. And again, it has the chemical formula of C6H12O6. If you divide everything by six there, each one of these, you're going to get that one to two to one ratio. Now, fructose and galactose are isomers of this sugar molecule. What that means, if you remember back from 3.1, what that means is they have the same chemical formula, but the structural formula is different. So take a look down here. We have glucose, we have galactose, and we have fructose. Now, you might say, well, hey, Mr. Fryoff, that glucose and galactose, they, they look very similar, and I would agree with you. However, there's one change. If you look over on the left-hand side, you can see this hydroxyl group is pointing down, and this hydroxyl group is pointing up in galactose. I know that might look very like, oh, okay, it's just one little change. That one little change is monumental. It doesn't react with certain enzymes. It doesn't react with certain other molecules. Just changing that or just flipping that OH group. Again, you're keeping the structural formula the same. You're keeping the molecular formula the same. But the structural is, is going to be different here. It changes everything. Remember, when you change the structure, you change the function. Each one of these is going to have the same molecular formula structural formula is going to be different. So again, changing structure equals changing function. If you look, fructose is majorly different than, than glucose and galactose. It actually has one less carbon in the ring that we find in the middle. Again, it's on the side here. Again, has the same molecular formula, structural, very, very different. Here are some other types of disaccharides. Remember, we talked about maltose, which, which is two glucoses. We have lactose, which we'll talk a lot about in this class, which is a galactose and a glucose. We, we know where lactose is found or, or that sugar is found. We find that in milk. And we have sucrose, which is another plant uh, disaccharide. It's a glucose and a fructose. Notice how these are all different structures. That means they have different structures. They're going to have different functions or they're going to be in, found in different organisms. So again, these are more disaccharides. And you can, again, see that they're all ending in OSE. The next level up that we're going to talk about is something called oligosaccharides. This might be information that you haven't seen before. Um, so if you kind of get lost with this, it's okay. We'll, we'll come back to this next chapter. Oligosaccharides are a type of a carbohydrate that range from three to 10 saccharides long. I have seen longer, like I've seen some textbooks say like 20 saccharides. So that won't be like, you know, Mr. Fryoff won't ask on the test, you know, how many saccharides are, you know, uh, is like a 17, you know, sugar saccharide. Is that an oligosaccharide or a polysaccharide? I won't be asking that question. What you should understand is these are things called glycoproteins and glycolipids. Now pause, take a deep breath. There's a lot of words coming at you that you're like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of terminology. It's okay. Don't freak out. Just relax and, and just remember, I when I went through this, I was just as lost, you know, in high school and in college because there's so much information. Take your time. Try to break down these words. Try to find similarities in words. Try to start memorizing some prefixes and suff suffixes. I guarantee you that's going to help. So that being said, let's look at these glycoproteins and glycolipids again. We know what proteins are, or we're going to learn about them. We also know what lipids are, or we're at least going to learn about them. 
glyco, this prefix, is just another word for something pertaining to sugar. So it's some sugar that's going to be attached to a lipid or some sugar that's going to be attached to a protein. This is important for cell recognition. We're going to spend a whole chapter and about two chapters about cell recognition. Now, let me show you what these look like. You have glycoproteins, which are proteins in the membrane. You're going to have a bunch of uh, monosaccharides or glucoses, you know, all the, all the uh, monosaccharides attached. Where is our glyco? That's our glycoprotein. And where's our, our glycolipid right here? We have the lipid ends that are, that are green. And we have more monosaccharides joined together to form a glycolipid. And you can see here, there's looks, looks more like, more like, or, uh, more than 10. So again, there is some variability there, but it's around three to 10, somewhere in that range. All you need to know is these are used for cell recognition. Now moving on to disaccharides. So we went from monosaccharides, now we're going to disaccharides. And if you can kind of tell here, di means two. So di, that, that prefix means two. We're going to have two sugars or two saccharides um, uh, in these disaccharides. So you can see here it says contains two monosaccharides joined together by a dehydration synthesis reaction. Don't forget about those reactions. We're going to use those a lot more in class, but don't forget about them. You can see we have two glucose molecules, which again, monosaccharides. These are the single uh, the single sugars here. If you look on the OH and the H here, that's what's going to be removed. Remember when we have a dehydration synthesis reaction, we remove water. What's going to happen is you're going to form two covalent bonds around oxygen that are going to pair up these glucoses and make something called maltose. Now you might start seeing some suffixes here that, that you can recognize. Whenever you see OSE, we know that that is a sugar or a type of carbohydrate. Glucose, fructose, uh, a galactose, in this case, maltose are all sugars or at least contain sugars. Maltose here is a disaccharide. It was formed by a dehydration synthesis reaction. You can see that water over here. Now, the odd thing about this is if you take a look down here, maltose, maltose doesn't have double glucose's formula. It's very close, but it does not have, it's not exact. The reason being is, again, remember, you have to take out a water. So we lost two hydrogens and one oxygen. If we didn't lose that water, it'd be C12H24O12. But since we took out water, we're going to take out two hydrogens and an oxygen. That makes this disaccharide just a little bit off from that one to two to one ratio, but it's close enough. And we know that they're actually made of those monosaccharides, which have that one to two to one ratio. Our last a uh, carbohydrate that we're going to talk about today is, is our polysaccharides. Now, there are a lot of polysaccharides, and you don't need to memorize each specific one. You need to understand the concept of a polysaccharide. These are long chains of monosaccharides. You can see amylose here, aminopectin, um, glyco or glycogen, um, different starches here. These are all examples of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, polysaccharides. Some of them will end in os, some of them will not. And so when you see O's, it's most likely pertaining to glucose or some type of um, carbohydrate. But just understand there are some of these like glycogen is, I mean, it's a carbohydrate, but it doesn't have O's at the end. So again, going back to last chapter, I said it's hard to paint, you know, broad strokes and, and broad brushes with the, uh, within science. Not all things that, that are sugars have OSC at the end. Um, just another example, it's really tough. The, the rules don't apply in, in all places. But anyways, going back here, when an organism needs energy, it's going to break down these polysaccharides uh, to get that energy. If you think about your day, you're not constantly eating food, but you constantly use energy. So how do you you know, manage that, you know, that small need of energy? And then maybe later on during a gym class, you're going to use a lot more energy. So one of the things your body does is it stores uh, monosaccharides in polysaccharides and then breaks them down later for you to use. Plants store glucose in the form of starch. You may have heard of starches that you eat. Animals uh, store glucose in glycogen. If you ever, if you're in the anatomy classes, where is glycogen stored? Think about it. It's stored in the liver. Um, let's go on to our last slide here. Plants use glucose for uh, as a structural molecule as well. So they use that, that, um, uh, the, the cellulose to build very tall. So, so that's why uh, plants can, can build very, or can build like their, their, their tree trunks very tall and, and humans can't. We just don't use uh, glucose in that fashion. 
animals and fungi also use chitin or chitin. I've heard it both ways, um, but they use chitin and uh, like it's in your fingernails um, and it's, it's that hard outer co uh, covering, um, but it's another type of uh, uh, carbohydrate. Bacteria use something called peptoglycan. And there are a lot of hard words. You don't need to know every single thing from this page. I'm just giving you some like, oh, I heard a peptidoglycan from Mr. Sharp and Mrs. Edinger last year. I'm giving you some uh, information uh, that, that might, you know, like it might jog your memory a little bit. These polymers form uh, because of different functional groups. Like I said, let's go back really quickly and look at those different uh, disaccharides. The reason they form different structures is because of those functional groups. Like maltose is formed between two glucoses because of their functional groups. Lactose is formed because of their functional groups. Same with sucrose. These monosaccharides that we talked about before are surrounded by different functional groups. The location of those different functional groups dictate how they are going to bond with other monosaccharides. So that's why when we go back up here to the polysaccharides, you're going to see that they form different arrangements to their functional groups. And some of this is, and I would say actually a lot of this is, evolutionarily, how they acquired enzymes that store these molecules. Um, so it's really based on your evolutionary history. So that's all of the, all the information you need to know for carbohydrates. Again, there's a lot of terminology here. Understand major concepts. Understand the major con differences between monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Understand um, what makes up are the uh, um, sorry what makes up carbohydrates, which are saccharides or sugars. Understand that when you ever you see OSC, you can tell it's a sugar, um, and just maybe some other just fine details. But that those are the main concepts that you should know from this chapter.